On October 13, 2021, China South to North Water Diversion Corporation held a meeting in Wuhan and announced the establishment of the preparatory group for a large-scale water conservancy project, which we'll refer to as the YRH project. This project transfers water from the Yangtze River to replenish the Han River. The Danjiangkou Reservoir on the Han River is the water source for the South to North Water Transfer Project, which we'll refer to as the SN Project. It was designed to transfer about 10 billion tons of water to the north per year. The chairman of the SN Diversion Corporation requested to accelerate the preparatory work for the construction of the YRH project and to ensure its completion before the end of this year. From October 15th to 16th, the YRH project preparation team conducted an on-site check along the entire project line. The YRH project is the first follow-up project to the 77 billion US dollar SN project, with a total budget of about 11 billion US dollars, making it undoubtedly another mega water transfer project. The expenditures for the SN project were huge, so why is there such a large-scale follow-up project? In a previous video, we analyzed the failure of the SM project from many aspects, including the actual water transfer volume, the negative impacts on the environment, imposing flooding threats along the route, and the economic benefits of project operation. In this video, we'll take a look at the $11 billion YRH project. This project is one of the measures taken to make up for the faults of the SM project. The main function of the YRH project is designed to divert water from the Yangtze River to replenish the Han River. The water intake facility will be on the north bank of the Three Gorges Reservoir, just 7.5 kilometers upstream of the Three Gorges Dam. Through a 194.3 kilometer long tunnel, the water will be diverted to the Han River at 5 kilometers downstream of the Danjiangkou Reservoir Dam. The equivalent water passage diameter of the diversion tunnel is 10.2 meters. The flow rate is 170 to 212 cubic meters per second. The altitudes of the inlet and outlet of the tunnel are 127 meters and 73 meters respectively. So the water will flow naturally in the tunnel, diverting a total volume of 3.9 billion cubic meters of water from the Yangtze River to the Han River every year. The difficulty of the project is the construction of this 194.3 km long tunnel, which has to pass through Daba Mountain. The highest altitude of the mountain top is more than 3,100 meters, which means the maximum burial depth of the tunnel is more than 2,900 meters. The pressures from the surrounding rocks will be very high. In addition, the tunnel has to pass through many soft rock belts, karst areas, and faulted zones, so the geological conditions are complex and the construction will face engineering problems such as rock burst. The tunnel will be constructed in 12 sections, with 119.51 km by tunnel boring machines and 74.78 km by drill blasting. Hubei Daily reported that the construction period will be 108 months. Shen Pei Hua, Deputy Director of the Water Resources and Lakes Bureau of Danjiangkou City, said in an interview that the YRH project will cost more than 70 billion RMB. So why does the Chinese government want to build this water diversion project? In September this year, the Yangtze River Water Resources Protection Science Institute completed the Environmental Impact Report for the YRH project, which states, at present, the tributaries of the middle and lower reaches of the Han River, such as the Tangbai River, the Qing River, the Man River, the Li River, and the Zhupi River, are seriously polluted. There is a large amount of wastewater discharge, and the water quality falls into grade 5 or 5 minus categories all year round, which are considered the worst categories of water quality in mainland China. This has a great impact on the water quality of the mainstream of Han River. After cascade developments, the water flow has slowed down, which significantly increased the eutrophication of local river sections. Since the 1990s, several water bloom incidents have occurred, affecting the safety of the water ecosystem of the water supply rivers. Six species of fish endemic to the middle and lower reaches of the Han River have disappeared. Of course, this environmental impact report does not dare to clearly state that these environmental degradation problems are caused by the SM project, otherwise it would not be able to pass this review. 
This statement coincides with the previous analysis by Mr. Wang Wei Luo, a water conservancy expert. Before the implementation of the SM project, Wang once wrote an article which says that the SM project plans to transfer 10 billion cubic meters of water from Danjiangko Reservoir to the north every year. The lower reaches of the Han River will be short of 10 billion cubic meters of water, which may cause the lower reaches of the Han River to dry up. And the amount of water entering the Yangtze River will also be significantly reduced. It will also bring damages to the ecological environment. The SN project started to supply water to the north on December 12, 2014. Previously, on July 28, 2014, official media, the Beijing News, reported that, according to estimates, if 9.5 billion cubic meters of water is transferred to the north from the Danjiangko Reservoir every year. The multi-year average water level in the Xiangyang section of the Han River will drop by 0.41 meters, and the annual inbound water volume of Xiangyang City will decrease by 21 to 36 percent. The 2012 Water Resources Bulletin issued by the Xiangyang Municipal Government shows that the city's surface water resources amount to 3.6 billion cubic meters, and groundwater resources amount to 1.8 billion cubic meters. The 2019 Water Resources Bulletin shows that the city's surface and groundwater resources are 2.05 billion and 1.56 billion cubic meters, respectively. It can be seen that after the Danjiangko Reservoir started supplying water to the north, the surface water resources of Xiangyang decreased by 43 percent. The underground water resources decreased by 12 percent. As for the city's groundwater table level, it is inferred that it has been continuously declining for years. But no relevant data can be found. According to the available information, the multi-year average natural runoff into the Danjiangko Reservoir of the Han River has been decreasing year by year. Taking 1956 to 1998 as the calculation period, the runoff into Danjiangko Reservoir is 38.8 billion cubic meters per year. From 1956 to 2018, it averages 37.4 billion cubic meters per year, and from 1999 to 2018. 34.5 billion cubic meters per year. Of course, the decrease in runoff into the reservoir is also related to the construction of the Panko Reservoir on the main tributary of the Han River, which intercepts the water flow. The Panko Reservoir was built in 2012 with a capacity of 2.4 billion cubic meters. A few dozen kilometers upstream of the Panko Reservoir sits the Eping Reservoir with a capacity of 296 million cubic meters. Which also intercepts part of the water. The spillway of the Eping Reservoir was washed away in late September this year, which we reported on in a previous video. When interviewed by the media, Mr. Wang Wei Luo said, "The average water volume of the Han River is about 30 billion cubic meters per year, and the government wants to transfer one third of it to the north. The amount of water transferred is calculated according to the average flow rate, but the water in natural rivers do not flow at a constant rate." There will be dry years and wet years. In dry years, the runoff volume of the Han River is only 10 billion cubic meters per year. If all of it were transferred to the north, the Han River simply cannot stand it. Then, how were the feasibility studies and environmental impact assessment reports for the SN project reviewed and approved? Don't those reviewers have this knowledge? It really is perplexing. In fact, while the Chinese Communist authorities were building the SN project, they also anticipated that transferring water northward from the Danjiangko Reservoir would lead to water shortages in the lower reaches of the Han River. So, before transferring water northward, they completed a canal diverting water from the Yangtze River to the Han River. This project was completed on September 26, 2014, three months before the implementation of the SN Central Route project. The project costed 1.06 billion U.S. dollars to excavate a 67.23 kilometer long canal, with a channel bottom width of 60 meters and a channel depth of about 6 meters, from the Qingzhou section of the Yangtze River to the Xinlong section of the Han River, which is more than 200 kilometers upward of the location where the Han River joins the Yangtze in Wuhan. The canal delivers an average of 3.7 billion cubic meters of water from the Yangtze River to the Han River annually. Although the water shortage in the downstream section of the Han River has been somewhat alleviated, while the 300-kilometer-long section of the Han River downstream of the Danjiangko Reservoir is still suffering from severe water shortages, of course 
This 11 billion US dollar YRH project is also related to another large scale water transfer project in the upper reaches of the Han River called the HRW project, which transfers water from the Han River to replenish the Wei River. Every year, 1.5 billion cubic meters of water will be transferred from the upper mainstream of the Han River and the Ziwu River to the Guanzhong Plain in Shanxi Province. The HRW project is located about 500 kilometers upstream of the Danjiang Kou Reservoir. This puts even more pressure on the Han River, which already suffers from insufficient runoff. The HRW project, with a total budget of 3.13 billion US dollars, consists of three main parts the Huangjinxia Reservoir, the Sanhe Kou Reservoir, and a water transfer tunnel through the Qinling Mountains. The Huangjinxia Reservoir has a storage capacity of 229 million cubic meters and is now under construction. The Sanhe Kou Reservoir, with a storage capacity of 710 million cubic meters, began operation this year. In September, the mainland media reported that the reservoir was ready for generating electricity. The water transfer tunnel is the most difficult project to construct, with a length of 98.3 kilometers and a cross-sectional diameter of nearly 7 meters. It passes through the Qinling Mountains and is constructed by drill blasting and TBM. The tunnel is still under construction. According to official media reports, the HRW project is a major national water resources strategic project. It will connect the Yangtze River and the Yellow River basins, supplement the SM project, improve the national water network, and solve the problem of water shortage and unbalanced spatial and temporal distribution in Shanxi province. The YRH project, of course, has another important role to play, which is related to the Three Gorges Dam. Building the water transfer tunnel for the YRH project is equivalent to adding a tunnel spillway to the Three Gorges Reservoir. At the beginning of September this year, both Chongqing and Wuhan were hit by heavy rainfall, and the two cities were flooded at the same time. Chongqing wanted the Three Gorges Dam to release more water to alleviate the flooding, while Wuhan wanted the dam to block the floods to reduce flooding control pressure. At that time, Wuhan was already severely flooded, leaving the Three Gorges in a difficult position. If the YRH project is completed, the flood control pressure of Chongqing can be slightly relieved by diverting water to the Han River. The water diverted into the Han River will need to flow through more than 500 kilometers to join the Yangtze River in Wuhan, which will give Wuhan some time and buffer for flooding control. This is equivalent to transferring part of the flooding risk from Chongqing and Wuhan to the rural areas along the middle and lower reaches of the Han River. Since the Chinese government does not disclose the feasibility studies of these projects, many specific details are still not available. The way the Chinese government makes decisions on large-scale projects is that the leaders make the decisions first, then do the feasibility study. Scientific laws have to take orders from the political power, and that's the rule without a doubt. And as long as leaders make decisions to do the project, the conclusion of the feasibility study must be that the project is feasible. Three Gorges Dam, the South-North Water Transfer Project, the Hong Kong-Zhuhai-Macau Bridge, all of these mega-projects are the products of this decision-making model. If this model does not change, there will be more stupid mega-projects in mainland China in the future. In the eyes of those in power in China, rivers are simply dolls that can be manipulated at will. They think that building large water conservancy projects is as simple as playing Minecraft or building Lego blocks. Of course, this also reflects the CCP's philosophy of conquering and rectifying nature. But there will no doubt be backlash from nature, as evident by the successive floods in China over the years.